Without a ball, it's just a court. Without your spirit, it's only a game. So together with the fans, we bring our best. Hennessy is excited to celebrate the intersection of basketball with art, music, and fashion. Each of these elements of culture represent ways that fans, players, supporters pay homage to the game, both on and off the court. Hennessy and Mitchell and us have come together for the ultimate drop, a limited edition collection to mark their shared love for basketball culture and to celebrate Hennessy's continued partnership with the league. The exclusive collection will have a limited drop available for both in retail and online and will be featured on the Hennessy Arena Tour, making stops in San Francisco, Saturday, March 9th, Dallas, Sunday, March 17th, Atlanta, Saturday, March 30th. Come see Club 520 Podcast taped live in each city. For your next pregame, let's share a twist on the classic, the Hennessy Margarita. A squeeze of fresh lime juice and a bit of agave syrup. Top it off with some ice and a salsa rim. Mix it, shake it, pour it. And enjoy the spirit of the NBA. Hennessy, without your spirit, it's only a game. 21 and over only. Please drink responsibly. Subscribe to our YouTube, Club 520. Uh, we clowning on that mother. Just hit the button. <laughs> God. Don't ask more questions. Subscribe. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. What up, what up, what up? How y'all what? Hennessy Arena Club 520, man. We proud to be here, man. We ended the tour in a wonderful, wonderful city. The beautiful, beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? T, you know a little bit about this place, right? Yeah, yeah I love that. Oh, man, good times, good times. Uh, but we got the man of the hour here in the 8 though, be honest. But I'm going to let you do your job, brother. We got a legend with us. And we don't use that term loosely. We got a real legend. Georgia legend, Atlanta legend. But to start it off, how we do, you know what it is, Club 520. I'm the host, my name is DJ Wells. Legend to my left, to my far left, my dog, Bishop B. Hen out the pearlies. How you what, Nasty? Cool and nasty, let's get to it. What's up, Atlanta? They still full off the lemon pepper wings back there. <laughs> nah, for sure. For sure, and that hen dog kicking in. Now, Lou, I know you done seen a lot of things. I know your foot game has always been nice. Have you ever seen the black forces with the white laces before? Nah, it's kind of passive aggressive if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's aggressive. That's aggressive. <laughs> no, cause cause he took the he took the edge off with the with the white laces, but that's something I do. I, I like the vibe. Gang. Yeah. I like the vibe. <laughs> Twin and them. Like the show. <laughs> By the end of this episode, we're gonna see if you still wanna be his twin or not. <laughs> <laughs> to my right, my dog, young Nacho, young T, how you up, man? Coolin', man. Hyped to be back in the city, bro. I love that eight. It's like my second home, so I'm happy to be here. I'm really excited for this interview. We wanted this interview to happen a long time ago, right? For sure. So we was able to get it done. Shout out to the family at Hennessy to help us out and get this shit done. For sure, man. Like I said to my left, we got a legend. Legend, legend, legend. One of the best people to ever play in the NBA. We don't say that term loosely. We really give hoopers respect on this podcast. And when you, if you ever watch this man play, you know what time it is. He's getting 20 no matter what. High school legend, straight to the league. Been in the league forever. Six man, one of the best to ever play, man. We got Lou Will in the building. Dog, appreciate you pulling up the 520, it's big dog. Good. It's all good. It means a lot to us for you to be here, yeah, man. We really listen, rock with you, bro. And I don't even drink Hennessy, but I'm going I'm to vibe with y'all today, so let's see how this go. <laughs> are you going? <laughs> well, you ever heard of a demon? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're trying to get let's another see. sponsorship. Oh, my fault. Uh, let's see how it go. We want a sponsor, too. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you Hennessy. Know. <laughs> Hennessy brings out the best in people. That's why we enjoy it. Yeah, I had great times every time. So, uh, for real, tell us more. Was you in Atlanta? Say Boy, that. where we been? San Fran, uh, Dallas, uh, Hennessy Atlanta. Your, uh, I can't ask you that. Of course, Hennessy is your drink of choice. <laughs> Why wouldn't the only? <laughs> <laughs> it's water in Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nasty ass combo. <laughs> water in Hennessy. Again, nah, you we're try trying it. to get another sponsorship. It's amazing combination. You gotta try it <laughs> with a splash of agave. <laughs> hey, y'all gotta quit killing us for our promos, man. It's Mike's fault. Mike, hey, like next live show, you got to get on camera, Freaky Mike. Make some noise for Freaky Mike, man. He the reason all this happens, man. <laughs> My dog. We always start the show with a wonderful question. I got to ask, you know what I'm saying? He got a little back and forth going on right now. But how did you feel the first time you heard your song by Drake? Uh, Six Man, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. The first time was, it was cool. I was I was living in Toronto at the time and uh Drake called me, he was like, yo, you'll pull up to the crib. I wanna I wanna play you something. So I was like, cool. So I was expecting like a party vibe, like a lot going on. And I, I got to his crib. It was just me, him, and my homie that was with me. And um uh, he just sitting there smoking hookah recording himself. So that album, um, if you're reading this, it's already, uh, too, it's, late. It's already too late. He sat there and recorded that shit himself. Oh, damn. Like he had a he had his own like mobile studio setup. 
smoking hookah, recording himself. So he was just like, man, I want to I wanna play you the album. So he didn't play it right away for me. He was just going through the album. I was like, yeah, that's hard, that's hard. And so when it came on, I heard it, and I looked at him, and he was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then he was like, like, that's, that's cool, like, can I... That's cool what I said. I said, man, run that shit. <laughs> what you mean? What you mean? This is Drake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at that time, it was at the height of his career. I mean, Drake been in the height of his career for, you know, going on 15 years now. And that was a big year for me. So to have the soundtrack to winning my first six man, to being in Toronto, having that whole thing go my way that year, that was cool. Nah. Man, that's fire. Yeah. That's hard. It don't get no better than that, but he in a battle right now. And you got you to gotta pick a side. You from Atlanta, dog. Ooh. Oh, you, oh. Damn, you gonna do Lou like yeah, that? You gotta pick a side, man. Is it Future or Drake, man? Which no, one you gonna pick, what? man? You gotta pick a side, bro. Nah, they, listen, you know, brother. Uh oh. <laughs> brothers beef all the time. You know what I'm saying? The brothers beef all the time. Obviously, they got a relationship, but I more than anything, before I pick a side, I enjoy this is the type of rap I enjoy. Yeah. I like when it's competitive. I don't like all the buddy buddy shit, all the teaming up. It's this is a sport. This is mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. Rap started with battles and I'm better than you. You better than me. I pick better beats. I, my my whatever I'm talking about is my my subject matter is better than your subject matter. So when it get to this point, especially with the Giants in the um in the game with the Kendricks, the Coles, yes sir, Drakes and everybody that's at the top of the list. Even uh, you could throw Yay in there because they all throwing shots at each other. I like it when it's competitive. I like it when it get a little when it get a little nasty outside and everybody gotta gotta bring their guns out. I like that. So. So Lou, Lou basically saying this shit ain't about nothing. They'll figure it out later. Nah, I'm gonna yeah, say this the, this the first beef I felt like ain't nobody gonna get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's safe for sure. Yeah, Andrew, y'all did your job, boy. He good. Yeah, <laughs> he, woo, you got a yeah, PR yeah. team, hey, boy. You cold, on, man. man. Come on, man. You cold, man. You know I got that See, media training. Yeah, I don't got that. <laughs> <laughs> who you picking in? <laughs> you already know who I'm rolling with. Where you at with it? I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> My nigga. <laughs> nah, bro. I want to take it back to high school, bro. The Georgia Stars days, bro. Can you... You got any memorable moments from back then in the AAU circuit? Because you was one of the ones. You you beat one of our teams, on our legendary teams back in the Yeah, let's talk, up, let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah, we're going to bring that up. Yeah, we, we, that's, why, that's, yeah. why, that's, why, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, Georgia Star team, shout out to Mike Mercer. That's yeah, we had, some, we, had some, we had some talent on there. Uh, an uh, underrated player that was on that team, uh, Jerry Cook, who was like a uh, that was a tight end in the NFL for damn near fifteen years. Yeah, Jerry Cook was my big. You know what I'm saying? A yeah. lot of people didn't know that. And then I guess basketball didn't work for him. He just tried out on a whim at South Carolina, and it worked out. Damn, that's, that's hard. And then went on to be, you know what I'm saying? Went on to be a tight end. But we had me, Mike, um, cat named Billy Humphrey was on that team. Yeah. Billy, uh, Billy made some noise in the college ranks. Uh, Atlanta. Jukes play he with the Georgia, Georgia, Avery right? Jukes was with us. Shout out yep. to Jukes. Yep. Yep. Shout, yeah, out, shout out to Jukes. Um, ATL, no mosquito. Lil D, everybody in basketball. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lil, Lil D is a basketball legend in the city. He was on our team, but we just had the perfect group, man. We went out. I scored all the points. Everybody else played defense. <laughs> so you was Iverson for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This nigga built the team. So they could go crazy. <laughs> Who was Eric Snow? <laughs> Oh, it ain't doing Mike like that. No, no, no. We had a cat named Greg Lockett. He didn't <laughs> care if he shot the ball one time. He was going to guard the best player. That was, that was our dog. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, they tried to do yeah. that to me in Milwaukee. Yeah. I was nothing. That was <laughs> the... <laughs> Get your corner, T. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> nah, okay. So that Georgia circuit was crazy back then. You beat arguably the greatest AAU team ever in our eyes. Yes, yeah. sir. Speaks in the heat. That's, yeah. that's in our eyes. We dubbed them, too. I know y'all beat their ass. Y'all beat their ass. They beat yeah, the Heat, bro. Them. I remember that shit, bro. Tap that was in, a Mike. Moment, bro. <laughs> yeah, we we dubbed them. We uh, where y'all playing, man? I don't remember where y'all played them. Played them in Indiana. Oh, y'all yeah, played, played them at Spees. Yeah, we played them in their backyard. That's probably how we caught them slipping. They probably was too comfortable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they probably was too comfortable when we caught them slipping. But we yeah, we 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 beat their ass. Okay, I just wanted to tap Respect. in with that. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen y'all talking about it. I had to leave my comment. <laughs> Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, I said, look at him. <laughs> look at him. We know you went out of high school. Yeah, yeah, relax. I had to, to let y'all know. Nah, respect. And that's another underrated fact about you, obviously going straight to the league from high school. That decision-making process, how was that for you? Because I, I can imagine. Uh, you said easy money? <laughs> yeah, I never was a fan of college basketball, but mm. I, the, the idea of waking up at 5 in the morning, broke hungry, and going to class just never registered to me, bro. It just never got through to me. So it 
If I was gonna get drafted anywhere, this Hennessy hidden too. Let me put this <laughs> shit back here. No, 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 don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, we got the. I don't know what this is, the honeycomb, but yeah, yeah don't it just, hide uh, it. <laughs> nah, it just got. It just got to a point. I didn't really care where I was gonna get drafted at. I knew I wanted to. I wanted to put my name in a in a on a draft board because I started living a different life. I started experiencing things. My senior, my junior, and my senior year, I started experiencing something that was different than my classmates was, and I was just like. College probably not gonna be the next uh, next step for me. I could have seen you playing at OTE. Yeah, I probably would have been one of them. Yeah, I, I probably would have been one of them kids. But you know, that's a dope platform for them to have and and, and go out and mm -hmm. and be realistic with kids, man. Don't waste no, don't waste them kids' time, especially you know you you know. I listen, my I just left two AAU. Look, I still got my still got my band on. I was coaching this morning with my girls. You know who going to college for college and who yeah. just who going because they got to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for had, for these kids to have that platform, that's that's dope for them. For sure. When you say your junior and senior year, you were experiencing different things. Like, what was you doing? <laughs> you seen that nigga on cribs. Yeah, oh, I did see him on cribs with they the big selling, ass jersey. They were on. selling out Georgia Tech. Hey, that, but that day I was I, my my jersey was hard as a motherfucker. No, nah, that jersey though. was tough. Yeah, yeah. I was hating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I know he get that, paid. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, I just I just started I just started meeting people. Like I met LeBron on a Tuesday. Bron introduced me to Jay Z on a Thursday. Oh right, Lord. And then I went to class the next day. I'm looking around like yeah, ain't no go. way. I'm like, y'all. <laughs> they didn't introduce you to Diddy though, right? I no. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure, getting that cleared up. Nah, nah. Get that cleared listen, up. Be, Allegation. Yeah, nah, my nah, 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 I'm gonna be like, acting a damn fool today. <laughs> <ain't> <laughs> listen, I'm gonna let her the Hennessy is bro. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Never been to a never never been to a Diddy party. Right, no, for, bro. for good or for worse, I never been to. Hey, a you for Willville, bro? We got got your whole party. Lou, you gotta ask him that question though. No, nah, yeah. Hey, don't don't start that shit. You started it. No, no, he about to start something, bro. Don't do that. You know they say leave before the devil come. <laughs> he tried it out. <laughs> he say he called the Uber. <laughs> no, I did. I left, bro. I left. Nah, for sure. I mean, obviously, you played in a lot of different cities. We know how you feel about the hey, that's hometown outside of here. Where was your favorite city that you played in? Played in? Mm hmm Man, Toronto was an amazing year. Mm. I think that's why they didn't re-sign me. I think they knew <laughs> I liked it too much. <laughs> Damn. No, nah, think about it. I, I I won my first six man of the year, and they did not offer me a contract to come back. They that's was like, crazy. you got to go. Wait, I, I thought you had kind of, you know what I'm saying, it, it kind of fell off. I didn't know they didn't offer no, me at all. I, no, they kicked me out. Damn. They absolutely kicked me out. I think I was, I was, was lifestyle shit. You know, I had a lot going on in the family room at that time in my life. And yeah, respect. the wives probably was like, yo, they got to get a buddy out of here. Like, <laughs> well, you, you know, he, he might be influencing our husbands the wrong way. And so, uh, yeah, they ain't offered me a contract to come back. They was like, appreciate everything. This probably not going to be a fit for us. Wow. That's crazy. And it had nothing to do with basketball. Nah, because you was killing that year. Yeah, and I heard you tell a story. I mean, we're gonna get back to when you first came into the league, but I heard you tell a story about Toronto, how Demar and them kept you. You feel like you was about to retire and then go out and be a six man of the year. Yeah, my um. So I tore my ACL. We was yep. teammates. We yep. was teammates then. Yep. So I, mm -hmm. I I tore my ACL. It took me about two years to kind of get my feet back under me. But when I came back, I was slow. And before I tore my ACL, I was explosive. Like yep. I could finish at the rim. I dunk you. You know what I'm saying? Like I had speed. And then when I came back, I had to change my whole game. And uh, Mike Buttonhoser, he told me, like, he pulled me in the office, like, yo, we're going to find a trade partner. We don't think this going to work here. You know, you'll never be the same player that you was. We don't, we don't think you'll ever be the same player again. And um, Damn, I fucked with Coach Bud. <laughs> but, out of pocket. Yeah, no, but, yeah. Yeah. but he told me to my face, I respected it. But nah. I, the next year, I went my first six man. He called me. He was like, I was wrong as fuck. That's yeah. my bad. You Shout know what I'm Bud. saying? Yeah, he was wrong. So... Once I when I got to Toronto, I had that in the back of my mind, like you know, this might be the end of the road. You know, for me that was uh, what was the year? I think that was my eleventh or twelfth year in the league. Yeah. So you know, I had a full full career at that point. I felt really good about the things I was able to accomplish, and so I thought Toronto was gonna be my last year. So I told them like, yo, this is gonna be my last year. I'm gonna play it out, and then it's whatever. And um, Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Amir Johnson, Chuck Hayes, they was my four teammates. They was like, bro, if, if this is going to be your last year, man, you finna go out swinging. We just going to feed you the ball and just have fun and just do your thing. And that's, that's what they did. They supported me, wrapped their arms around me. Um, I think Toronto being 
out of the country saved my career because it kept me away from a lot of distractions. Mm. It made me just focus on basketball until I got to a point where I could start focusing on some other things. Um, but it just it just locked me back in. And that was one of the best years I had. And it rejuvenated everything. And yeah. the five years that I had after that was my, the best years of my career. Yeah, facts. That's I, crazy. I didn't get people to put their arms around me when I was going down. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. Bro. Why are you thirsty for that? All right. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I got to relax. Sip I got to relax. I got to relax. They get thirsty for a hug. I mean, y'all listen to do it. They... <laughs> Listen, man, I was I was having a bad time. They just kicked me. They just, go on ahead and leave, bro. That's why I make jokes about them now. But anyway. We ain't never get buck season tickets. Nah, they ain't give it to me. I don't care. Somebody asked me about that earlier in the crowd. Like, you ever gonna get them season tickets for the Bucks? Nah. nah. They ain't coming in the middle. Nah. They ain't rocking with you? No. I ain't been to a Hawks game this year. They they charged me for tickets. Oh, the Hawks charge you? That should sound kind of you, crazy. You know right? what's crazy? They charged us. All right, well, I don't take it personal no more. Yeah, Shout I'll, out to Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Appreciate y'all because I had to pay for a Hawks game. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm on I'm on I'm on strike right now, man. They they asked me to do all this other shit for them, but but they asked me to pay for tickets when I come to games, so I, I watch it on TV. They put Boosie Corsair now, Lil Will. We gotta talk about it. That's out of pocket. Yeah, it's Boosie. crazy. That's the only team that I've played for that don't accommodate me. Mm. That's tough. Damn. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but we'll it's figure it out. Yeah, business we, is business. They're going to get it done. We're going to make yeah, it make business sense. Business is business. It's all good. Yeah, for sure. But how was it coming into the league as a teenager and you get to play with Allen Iverson? Mind-blowing, because if anybody know my game, I, I patterned my game. I patterned my style after, Nala, after uh, AI. Mm -hmm. So coming in, I was terrified of the dude. Like, I was scared that what he was going to say, how he was going to treat me or whatever, because a lot of times you don't want to meet the person that you look up to because they probably going to let you down nah, with how they act. Girls. So I was like, damn, man, I've been looking up to this dude my whole life. I would hate for him to be the person that I end up not fucking with on this team. When Jeff met Diddy. <laughs> bro, I boy, never yeah. met him, bro. What are you <laughs> talking about, bro? Back. Hello? You got chill. What was the name of that <laughs> tussie, bro? I don't believe these allegations, bro. This is all Ooh, That was right on time, Nasty. <laughs> Listen, my idol was Michael Jordan, man. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> now, nah, but uh, homie embraced me, man. And um, I remember the first thing he said to me, I was at a celebrity basketball game. He walked in and we made eye contact and he beeline towards me. My heart started beating fast. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, he got a big entourage with him. And AI walks up to me. And he said, you the little motherfucker they drafted to replace me, huh? That was the first thing AI said to me. Damn. Damn. But he said it while he was bear hugging me, though. He was like, welcome, bro. Anything you need, I got you. And that that started my experience in Philadelphia. Like, once he once he embraced me, that whole city embraced me after that. And it made my transition from, you know, being a 17-year-old kid to giving me all the confidence that I can compete with these grown men. I know that per diem was bro. No, nah, I, I, I had it. I had it good because I was I was his rook. So that's what I'm saying. I know Irish yeah, was showing here. Yeah, like, he was he gone. was introducing me to some money that I had never seen before. Yeah. Just pocket money. Yeah, for sure. Damn. Did, did anybody ever show love to you on the program? Oh, no, my rookie year, I had Joe, Josh, you had Marvin. Me. You had I had dope rookies. Yeah, 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 I had uh, Eric. Dope vets, yeah. Mike, yeah, I had all type of money. Hey, man, speaking of celebrity game. Hold on, I, I want to ask you Hold something on, about Mike Bibby, because Mike Bibby was on our show last week for uh, the okay. joint I do on, on, uh, on FanDuel. Okay. He was swole. he always like was a lifter like that. Nah, he, he was so strong. swole like that. He was stronger. He he on steroids now. <laughs> hey, don't allegedly, that's what I'm like. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Shout allegedly. out to Mike Bibby. Hey, don't do that, bro. Bro, he like the Ultimate Warrior, bro. He, he <laughs> looks crazy. Telling, though. You but, gotta be snitching, Charleston White. My fault. My fault. Listen, he Damn. like my fault. Nah, Bibby a body slamming nigga right nah, now. But he was strong like that when we was in the Respect. league, though. He probably had to be like two twenty five when we was in the league. He was big, but right now he probably two fifty, bro. bro. <laughs> Bro, not right, bro. Nah, dog, I love him to death, bro, but you too strong, bro. He ain't got to shoot a basketball no more. He nah. Just... I don't think he can pick in there. He might <laughs> smash the ball, bro. He too He'll strong, shoot the fair one. <laughs> nah, I don't want no smoke. I seen him in that polo. I said, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, bro. When you were a 3X and it looked like a medium, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> he going to kick your ass. He going to kill me. He going to call me right after this. <laughs> hey, but speaking of uh, celebrity game, some uh, footage just resurfaced. You playing his celebrity game, man. Yeah. 
Legendary, my nigga went crazy in that movie. I was getting buckets. Uh, they only showed my highlight getting crossed by AI. But yeah. <laughs> it's all good. But that was a time, boy. Uh, Lou invited me to the game. Lou always been cool. When I first moved to Atlanta and played, I went to a, a Pro-Am game. And Lou and Jerry Jack was having a battle. <laughs> Man, Jack always had this thing, bro. Yeah, I don't know what y'all had going on, but Lou. No, we always had this. We always had this thing because I was the best high school player. Okay. And mm-hmm. Jack was the best player at Georgia Tech, yep. so we was bubbling at the same time. But I was in high school; he was in college. Yeah. So every time we ran into each other, it was, was all smart. out. Yeah, it was but all this, out every this, time. He we ran ain't into telling each other. y'all the story. <laughs> Lou hoop with all his homeboys. It's just Lou and his homeboys. It ain't no other NBA players. Real they, Georgia stars. Yeah, they got six, two people, five, ten. I'm like, they about to get killed. Jerry Jack got NBA players, all this. Lou got like 55, right? So I'm looking, just I'm like. pass the ball till I shoot. Yeah, yeah, I'm like. They just pass till I shoot. I'm like, he different. Like, you know what I mean? So we yeah. get to, he, him and Jerry Jack are in the whole game. He killing him. And Jerry got all these NBA <laughs> players. I'm crying, laughing. So we play in the regular season. I'm a rookie. And I remember this. And they like, get in, you got Lou. Man, I was terrified. I was like, he looked at me, was like, what's up, boy? I said, oh, he about to try to kill me. Oh, he, he ain't true, though. He kept it cool with me. I was like, I only had two minutes. So it was, it was cool, bro. I appreciate that, bro. For real, I was nervous. But how was that when y'all, when y'all finally became teammates? Oh, a dream come true. Because I had a whip. You got to think. I heard about Lou Willville. So the reason 520 ever started is because of Lou Will. I'm going to give you your flowers, bro. He said that on camera too. We nah, gonna, fact. We're going to so, we gonna clip that up. I'm going to use that. So look, Lou Will, I went to his, he has a uh, Halloween party for his birthday. Yeah. And I pull up and I see his crib. I'm like, damn, I got to recreate this shit. <laughs> like he having too much fun. Yeah. So I go home, I buy me a crib and this is how 520 comes. So we all have a Lou Willville at my crib, but we call it 520. And that's how our podcast started because yeah, I went st- to this party ahead of time. You start having kids yet? Nope. Yeah, they going to get rid of all that shit. My kids, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my kids restructured my whole situation. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Ain't no, ain't no club. Ain't no party. Damn. Damn, you ain't had one since? You ain't got nah, the back room? No, nah, we do. We do. It's just hard. You it's, got the back room? It's, it's a little difficult now. You still got the back room? Nah. Oh, no. the back room was elite. No. See, my kids, they done got to the age. They know who I am now. They yeah, they, yeah. they Googling, they YouTubing now. Uh, you know, okay. I got a teenager. I don't know where the time went, but I got a teenage daughter now. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I'm dealing with some different type of pressure now. She hooping too? She hoop. Yeah, okay. she do her thing. She For went sure. crazy this morning. That's, that's crazy. That's first, though. Yeah. Damn. How is that? Like, obviously, becoming a father and now your kid, like, loves what you love. Like, to share that passion, how is that? It's, a, it's crazy. It's, it's surreal, but it's... Because I coach her, I have to find, like, middle ground from being her dad yeah. and a coach. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, like, one time she said something to me, and I told her, come here. She said, I got it. I said, no, 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 I'm talking to you as your dad. You ain't going to talk back to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we have to have that that balance of, you know, all of us, when we get to when we get 13, 14 years old, them, them the years we trying to get away from our parents. Yeah. You, know? you know, so I try not to be overbearing, be out of her way, and just coach her and allow her to... Um, just allow her the opportunity to build with her teammates. But basketball has made our relationship stronger as a father and as a and as a parent because she's getting to know me on a different level of, you know, just being a parent. You know, in the in the season, man, you you really you you a weekend dad for real because yeah. you always on the road, you always moving around. When you come in the house, you yeah. trying to put your foot down. You trying to be this. Um, this person to like, I, I run my house, but the reality is you always outside of the crib. For sure. And so for me to be retired, going on two years, being able to spend so much time with my kids, our relationships have gotten so much stronger and Sorry. I can appreciate where it is because this is this is where I w- always wanted to be as a parent, like having a super special bond with my kids. And so my That's daughter so- got into the hooping, um, been able to guide her through that. And then now my baby girl just started hooping. I think she started hooping on the strength of her uh, big sister. So Damn, dope. it's dope, yeah. How you feel about, like, you know, you a hooper, so being a part of girls' basketball, it's a totally different game than the boys. It's completely different, yeah. especially coaching it, bro. You got to be, you got to coach girls completely different than you coach boys. See, boys, you can have a six, 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 seven boy that don't know how to tie, tie his shoes, chew bubble gum at the same time, yeah. and you can throw them on the floor. 
women don't have the athletic ability that boys do. Mm -hmm. So you literally got to slow down and teach them the fundamentals. And that's why you get a much, much purer uh, game of basketball yeah. on mm -hmm. the women's side because you teach them more. Yeah. Yeah. Boys, you cut a lot of corners. You know what I'm saying? You will cut a lot of the fundamentals out of, out of teaching them because of the athletic ability with girls, you teach them and you teach them and you teach them. And that's the, that's, you get the best, the best brand of basketball that you can. So mm -hmm. it's been fun. You got to be more patient with girls because, uh, the attitudes is different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the attitudes is different with the girls, man. But I, I enjoy it though. Yeah, does she hoop like you, or what's her game? No, like? my daughter, a, a big. She a four or five. She like I don't know how how she got to be a four or five. She Damn. play with her. Yeah, she play with her back to the basket. Oh, okay. okay, but she got it though. She got it. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, you know a T. How was it when you heard the news that he was like a high school coach? Did that surprise you at all? Yeah, yeah. Because T didn't talk a lot. Nope. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All of, first of all, no, no, no. First of all, all this shit is a surprise to me. The podcast, yeah. the coaching. I'm like, when does niggas start talking so much? I only <laughs> talked in the club. Yeah, we <laughs> we Free we was team. teammates, bro. T could come in, do his job, and get out of there. Yep. Like every once in a while, he showed his personality. Other than that, T kept to itself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? How, how was coaching high school basketball? Woo. It, it's fun. Like you said, it's challenging. Like you said, we can cut corners with athletes. But at my school, we got to teach a lot more. So I'm in the same situation as you. But it's cool, man. It's fun to have an opportunity to, like, teach the game that did you I love. Think you, did you think you'd be coaching? Nah, I didn't think I was going to be coaching. If you I did, to... I thought I was going to be, like, in the NBA or something. I didn't think high school. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, as soon as I retire. Yeah, we in Atlanta. Yeah, well, we is on the west side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I just remember... Um, the fuck was I talking about? I don't know. I told y'all Tennessee was hit. Mm, don't even worry about it. You talking about? I got you, Nancy. Don't worry. Tennessee on me too. It right? <laughs> <laughs> jumped on my back. Boss, that's crazy. I gotta relax. I gotta relax. Your back. I gotta relax. Hey, I gotta talk relax. Talk your shit, King. Nah, relax. <laughs> What's that Tennessee doing to you over there, player? Bro, you gotta relax, bro. Relax, bro, hey. bro, the allegations is crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can put it down. See, our pie, hey, Lou Will ain't been over here yet. He don't know. We don't care. So we say anything. But he got to chill on this one, bro. We, we at home. This family, bro. I, I live here, bro. I do got a question, though, for you, Lou. Do you think, you know, you coaching AU, which is hard. Do you think you can keep coaching girls, or would you want to move two boys eventually if you want to, you know, stay in the coaching lane? Uh, shit, good question. I'll be honest, man. I done built so many bonds with these little girls, bro. Mm, like, yeah. I'm 100% invested um, in these kids. You know, you get to know them. You get to know their parents. Yeah. And you get connected to them. You know what I'm saying? So, not only do we have our team, we've, we've built out because of that. You know, I got a fifth grade team now. We got a, a seventh grade team. I coach eighth grade. And we also got a ninth grade team. So, when, okay. you, when you're there every day and you invest in these kids. Like, I fly home every weekend from L.A. to literally coach these kids. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. I don't see, I ain't really looking in the future. I don't see me coaching boys or men in the NBA. I'm I'm connected you to my girls in. now. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm locked in with the girls now. All right. For sure. Obviously, we know you ATL, and you was here when they was really going crazy. I know you probably watched the BMF series, but how was it being in the city, being Lou Will during that time period? I was a kid. I was a kid. A lot of a lot of crazy shit that I saw, I thought it was normal. Hmm. Like I've been to a I've been to uh, club Club One Twelve for all the OGs and all the older. I ain't, I ain't gonna age, age nobody. Yeah, some Respect. some of y'all remember Club One Twelve. I remember going to a a, a BMF party Whoa. and they had trash cans of champagne. But I thought that was I thought that was a normal thing. I'm I'm 17 years old in the club, yeah. so I'm everybody literally imagine everybody in here got a bottle of champagne. And you could just go grab one whenever you want. I well, thought I thought that was the norm. So seeing that and knowing that that shit is far from normal, <laughs> BMF set a different type of standard in the city. They set a different type of standard. So I didn't realize what I was experiencing until I got educated on it. But I, I seen it with my own two eyes. Oh, yeah. There, there wasn't no way you would have went to college after seeing that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I was <laughs> like, it's no way I'm going to school and getting up at 5 in the morning unless somebody yell at me all fucking day. <laughs> I wish I would have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. It wouldn't be no 520 podcast. Nah, yeah. Man, it would be way different. <laughs> I've been a Pac-Man. Let me stop. <laughs> hey, man. Don't give him another motherfucking drink. <laughs> what is he talking about, oh, man? This nigga's crazy. But obviously, man, you still watch the game, still influence. 
who would you say young players right now that you say kind of modern like their game like you can see yourself in? It ain't a lot of them. Um, Malik Malik Monk is close Facts. to it. Facts. Shout um, out to Malik. Yeah, yeah, Malik Malik Monk. I got I, I got Malik Monk as my six man of the year. If not him, I like Nas Reed mm-hmm. in Minnesota for six man of the year this year. Nas going but crazy. Malik. You could tell he's one of them guys that pick up game from a lot of guys. I can see some remnants of how I play in his game. Thanks. And, you know, he take that and, and he make it his own shit. But Malik is one of those guys. Um, quickly is another one of those guys. He said it, He you know, he said it gave me my flowers to my face. Like, bro, like, he was my favorite player growing up. And that was, uh, that was, that was dope to experience that, you know, especially with just being a six man, you know, not to undercut my career, but... You know, I wasn't an all-star, I wasn't a superstar. So to have some young kids pattern their games after mine, that's, you know, that's that's like the biggest honor to me. And that's one thing I want to say, like, niggas can say superstar or whatever, but you meant a lot more to people off the court just as much as you did on the court. So I think that does put you at a superstar status, bro. Because we look at you totally different. Like, that might, might be critically acclaimed, but the respect level, I think, especially y'all talk about that a lot, the respect that you get from people is way more than that. How do you feel about that? Like, I know you probably should get more of your just do, but to everybody who see you know what it is. Like, it's always yeah. respectful. I'm at, I'm at peace with my career. That's real. Yeah, I'm at peace with my career because I got the respect from my peers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If if you talk to, to NBA players and people in the circle, uh, the NBA circle, I always give my flowers. I always give my respect. And that's the only thing that's ever mattered to me. The people that I've competed against, the people that I've competed with, mm-hmm. they always say that I impacted the game positively. And that's it. So never being an all-star, I could care less. Um, never getting a ring, I care, but I could care less. Never being a superstar, never making, you know, the the, the big money, I could care less because at the end of the day, I I, I enjoy this game from a standpoint of being a kid. I learned how to play basketball when I was five years old, and I was able to feed my family and make a living off of just playing basketball. For sure. So with that alone, I'm cool. I'm at, I'm at peace with everything and how it went for me. For sure. Nah, facts. I remember you saying, you you changed, when you came to the team, you changed every way I looked at, like, the NBA. I remember one day I was complaining about something, and you was hurt. That's when you had tore your ACL, and you was training. You was doing the stuff with Pete, and we was in the training room, and you was like, Bro, you tripping? You know we get paid to play a kids game. Yeah. And I was looking at him. I'm like, Nah, nigga, you understand? <laughs> like, it's, it's they ain't passed me the ball last night. Yeah. <laughs> you like, Nah, it's a kids game, bro. You get paid to play a kids game. And yeah. after that day, I looked at it different. Like, damn, we really get paid a lot of money to go do something that we was doing as a kid for free. Cause we get we get wrapped up in ourselves, yeah. man. We get wrapped up in ourselves and. We just kind of lose sight of like big picture. It's like, bro, yeah. we stressing about some shit that we, first of all, we can't change it. Yeah. Nope. yeah. It's going to be what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? So why stress about it? And that's how, that's how, but the game made me like that just from, from experiences, bro. Yeah. It's different, bro. You had a different mindset. I think I'm going to get off basketball for a little bit, but you kind of messed up my life. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, said had, to, you, you said that to say this? Yeah, because then I had, to, I had to get back to the real. Because <laughs> me and you was hanging out, man, and you had whips, bro. So I used to come. I had a challenger. No no shade to anybody who got a challenger. But yeah, because I got you, one. We like challengers. I know. Watch your mouth. <laughs> I had a challenger. We like challengers. But like challenger. I had a black challenger. I thought I was doing some. I think mine might have been red at the it time. Was red. Man. But he came. He got ghosts. He got the Jeep with the big tires. He got all, I'm, and he pulling up, and I'm like, boy, where you going tonight? Like, Wherever. I said, boy, <laughs> boy, I'm about to change some things in my life. Young and dumb. <laughs> yeah. Young and dumb. And I was That's following all. right I, behind you. I spent way too much money on cars trying to impress shit. Man, I was right behind you. Yeah. I didn't get the ghost. <laughs> what was your favorite whip that you bought, though? Man, favorite car I ever had is a uh, shit. Uh, Back uh, then, uh, 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 uh. you had them all. Yeah, I had everything but a cop car. Now, uh, <laughs> I told you he was. He, he oh, watched no, me. Probably, bro. probably my. Um, I had a. I had a uh, S sixty three AMG. That's probably my favorite. Mm, nasty. Yeah, you had that with the Hawks in you. I had a couple. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. I, it is what it is. Respect. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Also, who should I gotta ask? What's one of your favorite games and most memorable games you played in? Don't matter what level it was. I don't remember, bro. Oh, I forgot. 
they really run together. Mm. I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I fucked up in my career because I always was in a moment. Mm. I never really paid attention. I never really cared about like what was going on. I always just in a moment. I, and and my, my homies will tell you, I got the worst memory when it comes to basketball stuff. Cause I, I play a game, delete it from my head and get ready for the next one, bro. Man. Honestly. What the fuck was that? I, I wish oh, I could do that. No, nah, it's strong. Yeah. yeah, I remember everything. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about anybody in here. Uh oh. Already. I remember Buddy by the tree over there. <laughs> nah, I was just like, <laughs> nah, but I want to ask you because you you starting a podcast and you got it going. How was that? Like transitioning from basketball, how you asked me, how like, you would never have imagined me doing this. Like, what is life for you? I'm fig I'm I'm figuring it out, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm very much like T. I don't really like talking. And um the podcast, it puts you in a space to kind of talk about other people a lot. Yeah. And I don't I don't care to have an opinion on I don't care who fucking who, I don't care who dating who. Yep. And so we trying to we trying to find our lane and and when um Spank and, uh shout out to Spank Horton who's my uh shout my co-host on the on the show. We found a good vibe where we we can talk about comedy, we can talk about some lifestyle stuff. So yeah. to me, I'm more interested in the comedy world. He more interested in the basketball world. So he asked me a bunch of basketball questions. I can ask him a bunch of comedy questions. Yeah. And then we can meet in the middle when we start talking about lifestyle. So it, it worked for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why we we gonna be very selective about who we bring on the podcast, because everybody's story don't make sense to what we want. You know what I'm saying? Even when we clip up stuff, we value the laughs more than we value the controversy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of our clips will come out, it'll be more for the laughs and the comedy, the lighthearted shit, opposed to you know, the controversy and, and all the other shit. And I got to ask, this is a question for both of y'all. Like, the way you see how the NBA is covered and media is covered now, that y'all have platforms, like you said, you do it the honorable way, we do it the honorable way. To see other people, like, kind of do it differently, it kind of adds more value to that. How do you feel now that you can kind of be able to say, all right, I can talk to these young players, I can talk to these young comics and give them a platform, promote positivity, rather than trying to catch the TMZ bullshit? Yeah, it's cool to have your platform. I think some of us shouldn't have platforms. <laughs> Retweet. You dig what I'm saying? I think some of us shouldn't be talking, but everybody's free to have their opinions. I think it's too much opinions. I think it's too much information out there. Like every day we pro we turn into journalists. We might see a, a, a clip of something that might not even be true, and we might debate that shit all day with our homies. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? We spend so much time in other people's business and other people's backyards that we kind of lose sight of, you know, having your own your own opinion. I think we 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 too deep into to group thinking. So with everybody having podcasts and, and just trying to find your vehicle the, the best way you can, that shit is difficult, bro. I'll be honest with you. It's difficult because you you straddling that line because Antigua tell you, we got relationships with a lot of the people that we have opinions on. Yeah. So you kind of got to tiptoe around saying the wrong shit and kind of giving your honest opinion too at the same time. Thanks. That's why I can't get tickets in Milwaukee. <laughs> but what you say? Story. What's going on in Milwaukee? What Bro, I just said I ain't care that we won. <laughs> like... We won a chip. I ain't care, bro. He Why said we they had the weakest after party ever. Our after party was trash, bro. Look, I had better times at Lou Willville, bro. <laughs> like, who was that nah, after party? It was me, Brooke Lopez. Oh, that's 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 already <laughs> started <stupid>. off. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Hey, it's Pete, stupid, I know y'all gonna have P on the show one day. PJ Axie, bro. We was in there looking at each other Why like, Why y'all ain't fly out? Y'all ain't have a budget. <laughs> Listen, the I was, was I was Giannis. yeah, the budget was Giannis. Every yeah. every championship team I know, they they gas up the jet and they well, go up. You ain't get not this one. They gas up the truck. <laughs> he brought his ass back to so y'all. I got in my Ford pickup. Y'all celebrated in Milwaukee. I'm country, y'all. We didn't celebrate. I'm telling you, it wasn't no, nothing going on. What you did? You hopped in the Raptor. I, I got in my truck and I drove back home. To Indianapolis. So it was I so go. sad. So I can hang out with my friends, bro. I said, you just won the championship. Why are you at home <laughs> playing the game? <laughs> Lame ass. <laughs> I was on two counts. <laughs> I'm like, who? Load up. <laughs> Get the squad ready. <laughs> nah, man. They you telling wanna... me you won a chip and drove home? I swear to God. I swear yeah. to God. They ought to drove to Vegas. What are you saying? <laughs> Hey, look, blew that whole you know me, PJ check. Tucker, Bobby Porters. We like, yo, let's go to Vegas, y'all. Or this party, it ain't no party in Milwaukee. It was probably like 20 people in the little venue we was at. There wasn't nothing going on. So we asked Giannis, you want to go to Vegas? He said, no, nah, I'm going to celebrate with my family. Oh, so, yeah. And once Giannis said it's over, it's over. <laughs> like... <laughs> After that champagne shower they gave him, he was up out of there. Bro, they ain't give me no champagne shower, bro. <laughs> you crazy. 
watch. I don't even know. <laughs> I was drinking Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I had a whole bottle right. of hen dog by myself. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't even party afterwards. You ain't never heard nothing like that, how you little. Nah, that's that's shit me. Yeah. Nah, it's a fact. We'd have made it pop. We'd, I know. Yeah, I said, yeah, we'd have, we'd I said, yeah, we'd have been on a jet champ. I said, if we would have won a championship in Atlanta, we was it, here. Look, we done took jets oh for worse. God. That's a fact. <laughs> we done took jets for worse. Uh, trust me, we going to spend that money. I was hoping the owner like gave us a jet and we could spend like 200000 yeah, on him. y'all bogus. They ain't they wasn't rolling. Yeah, y'all bogus. But imagine we would have won a championship in Atlanta. Boy. Our parade party would have had a Magic City float. It would have been freak neat. <laughs> <laughs> now, see that float coming down the street? What? That's a nice float. Man, what? Going Wonderful to the float. top. Y'all niggas will be out Robin of the league. Robin to the bottom. <laughs> That'd be our last game in the league. <laughs> I, would, I probably wouldn't mind that. <laughs> that would have been fire. I, but when the uh, Falcons almost won with Tom, my fault, y'all, anybody. But when Tom Brady came back, I had booked a ticket to come back that night. We oh, had yeah. a game in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. I was in New York. Yeah. And I booked a ticket to come. It, it, it didn't work out. I lost yeah. my money, but it's all we good. We was in New York. Everybody was making plans. Damn. Everybody was making plans. Y'all got to win something. Sure. In that. Hey, I got to be here. Because I'm going to spend all my money. And see it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> Ah uh, man, before we get out of here, we're going to open it up to the crowd. Anybody got any questions they want to ask? Any brave souls? We're going to put you on the spot. Okay, big dog. What's happening? Y'all got to y'all gotta get a mic in the crowd or something. All right. Would you have, Luke, would you have rather won your three... Six time, and you gotta explain why too. Would you would have rather won your three six time or um, uh, six man of the year, yeah. or would you would have rather started for an organization and why? It's a really good question. Uh, I'm gonna take my uh, damn, that's a good question, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm gonna take it how it went, bro. I think okay. I, I, you know, I it, it went how it went for me. It wasn't an ideal. It wasn't ideal for me to come off the bench. I would have liked to start it. I would have liked to been a feature guard on the team, but it, it just didn't go down like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm blessed to have 18,000 career points off the bench, which is which is legendary in itself. Um, so I, I I take my career how I went. So I take my three six men. Okay, no doubt. Appreciate it. I got a question for you, Lou. Do you think the award should be named after you and Jamal? Absolutely. Yeah, they gotta change that, man. Yeah, for sure. I, and I take I I I would appreciate it either way. It, either they can name it after Jamal or name it after me. One or the other. I think we both changed it. We transcended it. I right. always, when this conversation come up, I always pick myself because I made it like I I made it a, a cool thing to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and I think Jamal's path and my path was different. He was he was a feature guard. He had yeah. opportunities to be that. I think later on in his career, he became a six man. Yeah. I was a six man from early on. Yeah. You know, so it was always my it was always my route. It was always my role. So anytime it come up, only for that reason, I always give myself the nod. And I say, Yeah, I always say it should be me because only because of that. But yeah, we made it cool. But I, I would appreciate it if they changed the name. I we thought. Man, Jamal was behind the scenes. We was like, yo, we about to, that shit about to be named after one yeah, of us. You know what I'm be. saying? And then it went to John Havlicek, yeah. who got 11 championships. I, I, I didn't get that one. I, I, didn't get I, it, I, didn't, I didn't get that one even, but much respect to him and his family and, his, and the things that he was able to do on the court. I just thought it should have been me, and, me or Jamal. It should have been. What's up, Peace Gods? Um, this question is for Lou and for Jeff. I wanted to know who's on your Mount Rushmore of ATL Metro Area basketball players. That's Lou. Um, so that's four spots. <clears throat> uh, me, Dwight Howard, um, Sharif Abdul Rahim, and I throw one of the young guys in there. I I I split between Sharif Cooper and and, and Ant Man. Sharif did it. Sharif is legendary in the city for what he did for high school basketball. So that's a fact. That, that fourth spot, I, I was split between Sharif and Ant Man. So, 
And the only reason I, I I always say this, but the only reason I leave Josh Smith out of this is because he transferred to Oak Hill. Other than that, Josh was putting pressure on the whole city, and yeah. but then he transferred out, and then he went out of state. So that's the only reason I don't add Josh. Yeah, I'm from Indianapolis. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know ATL basketball like that. Uh, high school, my fault, brother. What's going on, y'all? I gotta be controversial, like my uncle Big Hand. Who would win one on one, Jeff? A Lou, prime today? No, nah, ain't y'all prime. Nah, ain't y'all prime. Lou was a one on one. I'm a pick and roll. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm a Pat. Lou get buckets, bro. I would. You said eighteen thousand. I think I got six. I don't know. It, it, it's you said different, it bro. Sure, you probably got ten k. Nah, I do. I do. Turn it up. Yeah, I do. Now we talking about it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but nah, he he. That's what he do, man. He get ISO situations. I know his moves, but shit, I could stop him in the game. So. Right to left cross, fade shooting left. Man, it's tough, tough, tough to guard though. All right, Lou, good question for you. What was it like being a part of that playoff run here in the city? And if we had won at all, would you have retired after the parade? Yeah, shit, I I end up retiring anyway. <laughs> uh, that was a good, that was a great run. I I wish it would have went differently. I felt like, um. These motherfucking cameras rolling. Uh, I felt like we could have did some things differently, but we had an opportunity. You know, we went game seven. Um, Giannis got hurt. We thought we thought we was gonna we thought we was gonna make it happen after Giannis got hurt, but Chris Middleton decided to turn into Kobe Bryant. Yeah, they had twenty in the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> and put us out of our misery. But if we if we'd have won that one, yeah, I definitely would retire. I was gonna retire anyway. Yes, I sir. played that game. I had a couple threes that game. We were sick. We I had, looked we at the crowd. Was... <laughs> See, y'all didn't want me back. <laughs> y'all wanted Lou. <laughs> it didn't even play me, bro. They didn't even play me. I played eight minutes a game, bro. Nah, they y'all got to talk to Nate McMillan about that. Oh, sure. oh, damn, Nate. Yeah, I'm still salty with Nate yeah, to this gotta day. Be I'm Nate. All right, y'all, this is our last question. Freaky Mike. What's good, y'all? All right, Jeff and uh, Lou. Uh, I'm going to ask y'all, um, if y'all were in the league right now, what team would y'all want to play for? Shit, i go back to the Clippers. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the home team. That's the home team for me. I'd go back to the Clippers. I'd probably want to go to the... I go back to Milwaukee, bro. Nah, I ain't going to Milwaukee. <laughs> Another try ass parade. Nah, I ain't going to Milwaukee. Let me see somebody gonna be lit. I will go to the Knicks. Yeah, I ain't probably gonna get no PT. Never mind. Hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I go to the Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, appreciate y'all. Let's make some more noise for Lil Will one time, one time. Appreciate y'all rocking with us. Club 520 Hennessy already know what it is. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're going to get it back to the DJ. We appreciate y'all rocking with us one time. ATL.